Good morning. Good morning. Um, Kathy's going to give the Bible reading in a moment, but before we do that, I want to just clear just just some admin. It's always good to get the admin out of the way, isn't it? Thank you. Yes, it is, Mark. Thank it's you very really much. Good, yeah. oh, okay. The admin, so those who came in, you might have seen, I've got a white stick. There's a white stick there. I'm actually registered blind, so I cannot see you. They're I'm gorgeous. Just, I, I, They're you know, gorgeous. I, I know they are. They're young and fit and absolutely brilliant. I, I get that. I get that. But, but what that... What that <laughs> But what that means is if you're just nodding or nodding off, I can't see it, okay? So, so I mean, that's a good cover. But, but some vocal stuff is always really good. Cause you, and just an extra incentive. If you're quiet, I'll just keep going. If you're, if you're noisy, I get better, okay? I'm just, just saying that. And if you're going, what's the time? Then I know I need to finish. Um, there's that one. But actually, more importantly, actually is more importantly, we, we just want to say how much we love Gareth and Marion. Uh, they, they have, from we first moved here, and we've spent time with them. And it's my privilege, every Tuesday morning, Gareth and I, we meet and pray um, for each other and each other's churches. So we pray, I pray for you, and praying God's abundance on this church, as Gareth prays for ours, is we're neighbors, but actually we're family, aren't we? And, and it's a, it is an honor and privilege. You, you guys, I know you know this already, but I want to tell you, you've got some cracking leaders in them. People of integrity and skill and Woo! wisdom, and they are amazing. And he did not pay me anything for that, <laughs> because we're genuine. I'm genuine to be friends and things, so it's re really great. So if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to open your Bibles or turn them on, and we're going to carry on. You've been looking at the book of James. We are continuing that series, and James chapter 3, and Kathy's going to read the first 12 verses of James chapter 3. We love that you're going through the book of James. Who's found it challenging so far? Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, wait till you get to today's reading. <laughs> Chapter 3, Taming the Tongue. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Okay, Chapter 3, the first, we're going to do the first 12 verses of Chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who's never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large and they're driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Nice. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who've been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Thanks, God, for his word. Over to you, Mark. Thanks. Let me just pray. Father, I just pray that, that we may be and I may be open to you to hear your words, to be responsive to what you're saying. And Father, I just pray that you may help me guide my words, that what I say may be from you and the words that are from me, that you may let them just drift away. But Father, fill this place. Amen. So keep your Bibles open. We're going to dive into those words um, in a moment. But I, I've got a parallel text and, and, and I've got to confess, it's not from the Bible, but it's really good. Please trust me. And, and it's, it's like a commentary. It, it's on this subject. And, and I've got a video. And, and um, we'll, we'll watch and um, you, you'll understand, hopefully. See, it's a good parallel text, isn't it? 
What, isn't it fascinating? We did not understand a single word the birds said, but we knew exactly what they said, don't we? Isn't that really interesting? So we're looking at James, and, and James is, is turning his attention, his focus, on, on something really, really important, and that is about taming our tongue. Now, James has actually already said, he's already pointed at this twice, if you're familiar with James. James 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verses 19 and 26. He's already referred to this twice, about how we speak and watching how we speak. Um, but now he's putting his full focus on this subject of we need to tame our tongues. Now, I know some of you here are going to go, ah, yes, but Mark, he's talking to teachers. And I am not a teacher, therefore I am exempt and, and anyone feeling a bit smug like that, just hold your smugness just for a second. Now, now he is talking to teachers. He definitely says teachers should pay attention. And, and it is for people like myself and people like Gareth and other of us who actually lead and speak to bigger crowds. And we need to be very mindful because our words actually stretch a lot further than we think. Uh, occasionally, I, I will get people stopping me, complete strangers, and said, oh, I've heard you speak somewhere, or I heard a podcast, and you said this, and they quote me word for word, and that is terrifying. <laughs> uh, um, usually when they quote me good things, bad things they don't tend to say, but, um, but, but actually, your words can go a lot, lot further. So if you are a teacher in a church setting or other settings, is we need to be mindful that our words travel a lot further than we sometimes think. However, I think if James was writing this today, he wouldn't have highlighted teachers. Because the truth is, did you know that some of you here today, um, I'm guessing there's people here today because I've heard you sing and laugh and things like that, uh, um, is that some of you, you have a wider influence than I or Gareth or, or other people like that. Because if you are a social media person, every time you, you put something on Instagram, you tweet, do you still tweet or do you X now? I, I don't know what you do, but, you, um, but let's, go, let's go old school. If you tweet or you Facebook or you, put, you do a review on a product or a place, on a restaurant or a church, and, and you put a review that, and it goes on the internet out there, and thousands and thousands of people have access to it. How many times have you tried to buy a new kettle and you looked at the review and you've gone scroll through tons and tons and tons of reviews? Have you done that? And, and, and what people write, what you and I write, has a wide and far reach. And have you also noticed that when it comes to social medias and stuff you write online, is that we are often bolder when we write, and often much more frank in the way we do it. If it's face to face, we wouldn't be half as, let's be honest, rude as we are often when we write. And, and I know, I know you, you guys are going, no, 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 Mark, you don't understand. Whenever I write something on my phone, I always quote scripture. I'm, I'm, that, that's, Mark, life church is different to Fish Ponds Baptist. We are good, godly people. We give scriptural references and everything on all of our, so is that, is that, okay, probably not that true. James chapter three, verse two, he says, do you know what? We all stumble. Sometimes we write something that we, we didn't quite mean or the way it's interpreted. And the thing is, when it goes on the internet, it stays there for a long, long time. I think James would have said, okay, about taming of the tongue. This is to teachers and to bloggers and to Instagrammers and to Facebookers and to Twitters and to Xers and to anyone who actually leaves reviews, anyone who uses words, who speaks or who writes down things. That's probably most of us. You need to listen to this. Because we need to pay great attention on taming our tongue. The reason is, is words are so, so powerful. They are powerful. James says, well, you know, like a bit in a horse's mouth can, can move the whole horse. Or, or the rudder on a boat can move a boat. And just a spark can set a, a whole forest ablaze. He said, your tongue can do that. Your words can do that. And then verse 6, which Kathy read really passionately, but I, I want you to read it. With, it's on the screen. I was going to quote it, but I thought, I've got to memorize it. I'll just get you guys to read it. Is verse, three, is it verse um, 6 on the screen? Yeah. Great. Could you read it for me together? Okay, out loud. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, I think Kathy read that last bit more passionately, didn't you? And is itself set on the fires of hell. 
Who thinks, James, you know, take a chill pill, mate, here? Because that, that's, quite, that's quite an extreme verse, don't you agree? That's quite extreme. But it's interesting, if you, if you ponder, what does our culture say about the tongue? I'm, you'll know this rhyme, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words can. Is that true? So, so are you going more toward, maybe James has, okay, are you going to James or modern culture? Which one are you going to go for? James, isn't it? See, James, I'm not sure if you, you, you know, but James was um, a pastor. He was a person, obviously, but he's also a pastor of Jerusalem. And I reckon when James is writing this, is he's writing from incredible experience of him, probably words that were thrown at him, but also words that he'd seen that people are carrying. Of the words that people can say that hurt and divide, the gossip, the throwaway comments, the spiteful, divisive words that people say, words that leave scars, words that hurt, words that say you're useless, you're rubbish, you're ugly, you're never going to amount to anything. Words like that, a divide, they can destroy families, they destroy relationships, they destroy confidence, they destroy marriages, they destroy churches. This is 100% true. Our words can be so, so destructive. And James is saying, it is so destructive, they come from hell because of damage they do. Now, now guys, I know there's some people here, and you're saying, yes, that's right, because you have experienced it. Some of you have had words that have been said over you, maybe when you're really small, or maybe when you're in another church, maybe even this church, maybe at work or families or parents, and they've said something over you, and you've been carrying it. Maybe not just for a day or a week, but months, maybe years, maybe decades. Because these little words have sparked a fire, and they've corrupted the way you view yourself the way you view others. And some of you are carrying deep wounds. When James is saying that these are the words from hell, you're suddenly going, oh, I know because I'm carrying those scars. If that's you, I, I, I want to encourage you that there's hope in Jesus. I, and, and, and I want you at the end of the service, when we have some ministry stuff, is to come and, and just welcome Jesus in. I know some of you are carrying and some are working through and some of you, actually, there's some words that have been said to you that, that no one knows. It triggers you, but no one really knows. And I want to encourage you, bring it into the light. You don't have to tell everybody, but bring it to your leaders, to Gareth, the mayor, and to some of your team and just saying, I need some help with this because I've been really scarred by some of these words. And this is real. And some of you, this is what you need to hear this morning. But this isn't actually what James is focused on. James isn't focused on the scars that you and I are holding. What James is focusing is on the words that you and I speak. It's so much easier when we read this, going, oh, yeah, people need to control their tongue because I've been hurt. But what we need to do is we need to understand that our words can hurt others. Some of us are aware of that. Some of us know we've said things and hurt people. Some of us are oblivious to it at all. We just go around and say it anything. But we need to understand that we're called to tame our tongues because our words are powerful. Because I think, I think if we're honest, most of the time, instead of spending time in trying to, to tame our tongue, we tend to defend our tongue. We spend a lot of time because, well, do you know, it just needed to be said, didn't it? Someone needed to say it and I volunteered to be that person. And, um, or, or, well, yeah, but if you understood where I'm coming from, the hurt that I did, what they did to me, and we justify and we give all the reasons. Remember our parallel text, those birds, you saw what motivated them. One is you're overcrowding, get out of my space. One is, don't you understand? One is, oh yeah, he's different to us. And there's all those things, all those excuses. And we spend so much time, I reckon we spend more of our time defending our stupid words than we do taming them and stop saying them. Oh, really good. Yeah. So I'm going to, do you know what? You're, you can come to my church whenever you want. I love China. Come on. <laughs> come on. We, okay, so I, I, I want to give you three tools to tame your tongue. It's not, it's not actually in our text, but these tools, I'm going to give them to you, and you're going to go, oh, those are really helpful. Because we all need to tame our tongues. These are really helpful things that I, that you, you're going to go, oh, I can do that. Because I need to do that. Because we have to. Why? Because God says, I don't want us to be destructive people. I want us to be people who bring people together. I don't want your tongue to be out of control, that we excuse it, that we say things that destroy. We're not called to be a people who destroy. We're called to be a people who reconcile. 
So we need to be committed to this, to say, okay, I'm going to, now these, these are big, you might want to write them down, but they're, they're going to be, you can hang on to them, okay, right? The first one is this, they're all little anacronyms, is it three letters, okay, first one is this, it is, is BBM, brain before mouth, okay, now you've all heard that before, haven't you? We all know people who need to hear that, don't we? <laughs> Brain before mouth. Have you ever said something that's come out of your mouth and just bypassed your brain? Have you ever done that? Yeah, yeah. And, and all it said, BBM is just saying, remember, it has to go around my brain before it comes out of my gob. You just got to remember that. And when it goes around your brain, simple questions like, does it really need to be said? Am I the person who's supposed to say it? And is this the time it should be said? Because sometimes you're not the right person and this isn't the right time. Like, like after a sermon, you don't march up to me and say, Mark, that was rubbish. You don't do it right away. You pause a little bit, Gareth. You pause and tell me afterwards, okay? But how many of you have done that? You know, because it's right time, right words, right person. Brain before mouth. And just as you know people who need to do this, so do we. So BBM. Okay, do yourself, tell yourself, BBM. Okay, the next one is this, is OFM. This is one fact more. Because here's a really powerful truth. You do not know everything. Okay? Okay, I know, I know, I know, I know you don't know anything. But how many times, if we're listening to how you speak, and how you direct, and how you do everything, you're, you're, it sounds like you're positioned that you know everything. Because we do. One fact more is saying, before I open my mouth and speak, is there one fact more which may make me change my words? Let me give you an example. You're at work tomorrow, and you get in, and your boss, man, they're moody. I mean, they're grumpy. I mean, more than normal. I mean, more than normal. They're just grumpy, and they're snappy, and, they're, and, and you're just going, they, they are, I knew they were a bad manager. Now they're proving it. And, and you're about to tell your colleagues how terrible they are. And then you suddenly hear, yeah, they're, they're, they just found out their spouse has, has terminal cancer. Does that change your words? Or how about this? There's a person who you've been, you, you need to be in detailed contact with them. So you text them and they ignore you. Social media and they ignore. And you're trying and you're trying and you're going, why are they ignoring? Why are they being so obstinate? Why are they being horrible and not contacting me? Aren't they terrible? They just don't care. They just don't value. And you suddenly discover their phone was stolen. So that's why they haven't replied to anything. And it changes your words. After the service, when you're queuing up to say all the wrongs in my sermon or, or whatever you want to do, some of you are going to discover that I am going to totally blank you. I totally blank. I ignore you. I don't even smile at you. And you're going to go, yeah, he's chatting about the words and then he just ignores me. You know, typical hypocrite preacher, typical. Until you go, you remember he's blind? <laughs> now, I know this is a bit tongue in cheek, but I know, cause I don't, I know I don't look blind because I got glasses, because I got a little, very limited sight and I know I'm scanning there. It, it is complete darkness there. I cannot see a single person. I honestly can't. And, and I will ignore you unless you say hello, and, and, and then I'll try not to ignore you. Um, but when you, one fact more changes how you speak. I, I've preached this in my previous church when we were in Southampton, and, and, and actually preached it here at Fish Ponds as well. And so many people, I know, they, they, it, you apply that to your everyday life, and it will make a massive difference. So BBM, OFM, and the third one is BFG. Not big, friendly giant, okay? I mean, you could do that if you want, but, um, but you've got lots of other things there. But this is about your tongue. And this is be full of grace. So when you say something, because sometimes things do need to be said. They do. Sometimes they do need to be said. And when it's you, when you have to do it, be full of grace when you do it. Be full of grace. And that does not mean... Gareth, I'm saying this in love. Yeah. You're really ugly. Okay, that, that, that's not done in love, is it? Because Christians are great at that. We just go, I'm saying this in love. And then we assault them verbally. 
Has that been happened to me? Is that one of the scars you carry? I mean, but, but we can find ourselves doing that. What, what be full of grace is, actually, if you, I'm not sure if you covered this yet, but in James 2, verse um, 13, it said, let mercy triumph over judgment. Yes. Which is, if you've got to do judgment or mercy, sway towards mercy. Sway towards mercy. In our conversations, sway towards mercy. So, so, so three simple, no, three straightforward tools on how do you tame your tongue are BBM, OFM, and BFG. In John chapter 8, Jesus is in a very awkward situation. The religious leaders drag a woman, who, and they say, this woman was caught in adultery, and they said, you, this person of grace and stuff, what do you say we should do? The law says we should stone her, but what are you going to do in your grace? Okay, that was the scene. I'm sure many of you are familiar. Check it, beginning of John 8. And Jesus, do you know what Jesus does? He does BBM, OFM, BFG. Okay, what he does? He pauses, and he starts writing in the sand. Don't know why he's writing, but what he's doing? Brain before mouth. Let me just not react. Let me just think. I think he also prayed in that time. I reckon he did. Next, OFM. Oh, what facts more? Is there one fact more? And, and there's several facts more, actually. So, okay. Now, I'm sorry to be, I know we have kids here, but sorry. She was caught in adultery and adultery usually takes two people. So where was the man? Where was the man? And second, and, and thirdly, or secondly, whatever in there, is he's also thinking there is something else going on here. And it was. The religious leaders were trying to trap him. So the one fact more is there's something else going on here, and I need to be mindful of that. And then he was full of grace. His response was, well, let the person who has no sin, they can throw the first stone. And one by one, they disappeared. And just Jesus, the one who could throw a stone, was the only one left. And what did he do? He went, they're all gone. My turn now. Here's a stone. And God's going to slam you. Many of us think that. Many of us think that. Do you know what? The, the ministers and, and, and Gareth and Mary, they're, they're all lovely and lovely. But basically, God just is mad at me. And he's not. He's full of grace. I am so thankful that I have a God full of grace. But notice what the grace did. He said, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Okay, notice what he did, neither do I. So he didn't go, so what's your story then? What you explain it? Have you learned your lesson? I think she probably learned quite a lot. She didn't need a lecture, she needed grace. But Jesus didn't ignore the sin. Stop it. Now stop it. See, that's what mercy over judgment does. But how did he get there? BBM, OFM, BFG. I, I wonder of those three, you may go, I, want, I need all of them, but which are the one that you're thinking, that's the one that I need to work on the most? Okay, let's, let's, let's be honest here. Come on. You, don't, say, oh, I'm, don't say none of them because, well, actually, okay, if you say none of them, which of those would your spouse, <laughs> your work colleagues, your kids, your neighbors say, you need to work on that one. In my quiet times, I'm going through the book of Luke, and um, so I'm off notes here. I'm not sure what time I have, but I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, and <laughs> and, and um, thanks, Gareth. And it, it, one of the things, that again and again, I'm reading in Luke, is Jesus says, you know, those who are my, my, my family, those who are my mothers, my brothers, my sisters, are the ones who put it into practice. We know the story of the wise, the wise man who built his house upon a rock. Please don't sing it. it is, it's, the, it's the ones who actually puts God's words into practice. James says in James 2, he says, don't just be speakers of the word, be doers of the word. So which of those do you need to go, I, I need to embrace that because I need to tame my tongue. Because even a really well-tamed tongue messes up. Verse 2, I think verse 7 or 8, it also says as well, it just goes off. So we just need to keep doing that. So which one? And then James pushes in one step further. Because he says, you know, can a, can a spring do salt water and pure water? Can a, can a fig tree also do olives? The answer is clearly no. Yeah, the answer is no. If you're in doubt, no. A, a, a spring can't do salt water and clean water. A, a fig tree cannot produce olives. It just cannot do it. 
He's saying those words that come out of our mouths, he said, you can discipline, you need to use those tools, you need to tame them, that's really good. We need to, we need to, we need to. But he goes, I want to go deeper. So we need to understand where those words are all coming from. They're coming from our hearts. Jesus says, out of the mouth comes the overflow of the heart. Luke 6, 45. When we say words, because we, why did I say that? It's from our hearts. Now, this isn't to condemn. This isn't to beat up. Remember, grace, mercy over judgment. But what it's saying is, is we need to protect our hearts. We need to make sure our hearts are dedicated to Jesus. I'm going to train my words. I'm going to BBM, OFM, um, BFG. I want to do that. But actually, I want to make sure my heart is yours. I want to protect my hearts, my heart, over the things that go in my heart. What, what do you brood on? What do you give worth to? Worship. What is the desires of your heart? Is it a bigger house, bigger car, bigger job, bigger wife, bigger whatever? Is, is it... <laughs> but it's... Because that's your heart. What are you chasing after? What is it... What, what, what do you find you are constantly praying for? What do you think you're constantly watching on Netflix, whatever, on TV? What is the topic of conversation that you most have with your friends, with your neighbors, with your work colleagues? Because that's all heart stuff. Because if you're chatting, if you are, are owners of little kiddies, you know you want your kids to have, to mix with good kids. It says in Proverbs, you know, the... the the wise walk with the wise, and the companion of the fools suffers folly. That's heart stuff. James is saying, guys, let's look at the tongue. It's a really important thing because it has the power to, to mess us up, which we all know. And he said, just tame it, guys. Purposely tame it. Put those things into practice, but work on your heart so that words may flow out that bring life. Let's just pray. Just welcome God to move amongst us. Father, I want, I just, I just invite you, Holy Spirit, come and move. I know you're speaking and whispering and some of us have been really open and others of us have been pushing that away and going, oh, it's someone else, it's someone else. And, and Father, I thank you that this is a place of freedom, a place of grace, a place of your presence. And I pray, Father, that in your grace, you will just come. Father, some of us are carrying wounds. And actually, I said that, and that's where you've got stuck because you, you, you're really screwed up because of things people said. And Father, I thank you that there's healing in this place for that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But Father, I also know that many of us have actually been causes of those. And I pray, Father, our words and our heart, we come before you and say, God, will you give us strength? Will you change our hearts? Will you fill us again yes. that we might be a holy people, usable and open to you? Come, Holy Spirit, come.